Hey everybody, what's up? Today we're gonna to be talking about Giants B10. Giants B10 is kind of your first big milestone that you're trying to hit as you're progressing through the game. It's it's the it's kind of the intro dungeon. It's probably gonna be the easiest one for you to get to and through B10 on. We do have 11 and 12 now, if, if you haven't caught it yet. I'm a returning player. I, I haven't played in a few years, so I've got a lot of catching up to do. They've added 11 and 12. B10 used to be the highest. I do feel like it used to be a bit harder too. I think the game is giving you a lot more now as a newer player to solve the problem a little bit easier. <clears throat> but let's talk about the dungeon very quickly. The big things to consider here are one, he gets count he, he, he counterattacks every seven times he gets hit. And it's a big hit, okay? Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big hit, and that can be, that's one of the big problems of the dungeon, okay? Here we've got a an AoE that has a chance to stun. We have great damage on all enemies and a slow. And then again, we've got the fend off, which is the counter attack, which is kind of the big problem of the dungeon. And he's got a tower giving him uh, attack power and a tower giving everyone defense. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, defense break on your team, okay? So that the towers are setting him up to do big damage. And then he also does pretty big damage. And then again, this fend off is a real smack. Okay, it's a real smack. <laughs> uh, so, so this is usually why the run will fall apart. Someone will hit him at the wrong time and they'll get one shotted and your run will fall apart. All right, so today we're gonna talk about my team that I'm running. <clears throat> and then we're gonna talk about some other options that you have. I did a video years and years and years ago. For those that don't know, Summoner's War is the first game I, was, I started making content for. I, I was a very tiny baby Summoner's War creator way, way back in the day. And I have an old video one of my most viewed videos to this day, strangely enough, and it's about doing Giants B10 without having Veramos. And that used to be quite a feat. It used to be very difficult to do that without having Veramos. I'll card that video up there if you want to go see uh, old baby creator Jay Giggs do, do a video about, about Giants B10. I think a lot of what I said will still be applicable, but and we're probably going to touch on some of those things today. But... Uh, Anyway, it's been a long time. I don't remember exactly everything I said in the video, but I remember some of it. So again, we'll probably touch on some of it. But anyway, my team is <clears throat> Lapis, Bella, Kona, Shannon, and Melia. Now the game is gonna, if, you, if you're following your Summoner's Way quest, the game is gonna walk you through fusing Melia. She's fantastic. She's gonna be very, very good in here. The game is also gonna give you Shannon at the very beginning of the Giants path where you, you check the info. You just check the dungeon info like we just did going to give you a copy of Shannon. She's fantastic in here. Kona is excellent in here. Bella is excellent everywhere. <laughs> and then we're using Lapis. And Lapis is a bit of a risk in a way in here. But we're going to talk about why this is working as we go through the run. So the reason she's a problem is because she's hitting a lot of multi-hits, which is going to be drawing out that that smack that we were talking about, that counterattack from the giant that we're talking about. But the reason that it's okay is that she's helping us get to the giant safer. She is helping us deal with the waves much easier. The waves can be kind of tough uh, to, to get through. She's got good AOE damage. She's going to help us get through the waves. Once we get to the giant, she's almost certainly going to be the one that provokes the counterattack because she's, she's multi-hitting so much. The odds are she's going to keep drawing that. She might get taken out. That's fine. We are not we are not here to try to nuke the giant down right now. Later on, when you have a deeper roster and better gear and a little bit more experience, we can start to talk about some speed run strats for the dungeon. But right now, we're just trying to get a consistent clear. We're not particularly bothered with how long it takes. The biggest thing that we want to do is get consistent clears. We don't want to be wasting energy in here. We don't want to be wasting energy on failed runs. So we're, we're here for consistency, and then over time, we can, we can worry about speeding it up. So her going down at the boss is not a big deal to us because, again, we're not trying to damage the boss down with attacks. You see all these poisons? That's what we're trying to take care of the, the, the boss with. So uh, Melia pretty much single-handedly is going to take out the giant for you. Shannon is going to protect you and slow the giant down, slow the giant and the towers down so they're not getting as many turns. Kona's going to keep you cleansed and healed, and Bella is going to keep you healed, give you some turn meter, uh, strip buffs, and also uh, put a defense down up. 
that is going to enable your attacks to do a little bit more damage. Uh, but again, we're not really here doing big impact damage. We're here to do poisons. And you saw already she she drew out the first counterattack. More often than not, she's going to be the one catching the counterattack. We're going to go through and talk about how everybody's built so that if, they, if, if the other champs do happen to catch one, it's okay. I've probably run this 50 times now. I've probably done like five sets of autos. We haven't failed a run yet. Uh, so it seems to be a, a very consistent team. We'll go through and talk about the gear. The good news is a lot of the gear that I'm using, I believe the game gives you as you progress. So uh, one of the nice things too is that if Lapis does go down, she stops reducing his, his turn meter, which means these poisons will do more for us. She dies often. Usually it happens a little bit sooner. Um, and the run, I think, will actually be a little bit quicker if all these poisons get to tick. But anyway, this is the comp. And if you don't have exactly what I have, don't worry. We're also going to talk about some other champs that are very easy to get your hands on that are also going to do a lot of good for you in here, okay? So there's our run. That was 247. Our best is 156. As I said, if Lapis goes down a little bit sooner in the run, I think it tends to be a little bit faster. Those poisons ticking add up a lot. Melia just stacks poisons like a like a mad like a mad woman, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. So uh, let's go real quick, talk about how they're built. So Lapis, of course, she's wearing the Vamp Revenge set that the game is gonna give you for her. There's not a lot to go over there. Everybody's gonna get this gear set and, uh, and, and, and that's what we're rocking with her, okay? So attack, crit damage, attack. Again, everybody's getting that gear set. I've got her on Violent Focus. I don't remember if, if wh where I got this gear, <laughs> honestly. I have farmed a little bit of Dragon 7, so some of it has dropped. This Focus rune I was I got from somewhere else because I haven't maxed the rune yet with, with my own mana. Any runes that I have are ma that are maxed came maxed out, but I don't remember if there was some reward where I got to choose a gear set and maybe I chose Violent. Not exactly sure, but anyway, she's on violent. She doesn't have to be on violent. Uh, she can be on just a tanky, accurate set as well. You can put her on swift or some speed. I think a focus set's probably a good idea though, because you want her landing her debuff. So basically the goal with her is to tank her up and get some accuracy on her, okay? So we're, we're talking, we're talking, you know, earlier game energy sets, violent sets, if you get your hands on them, swift sets, also fantastic. Uh, focus set. If you're going to go energy set, you need to make sure you're getting some accuracy in your substats because she is going to need accuracy. Mine's at 87, and she is very rarely missing a, a debuff, so, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Bella, we also are going to have on Violent Focus. Bella can also do just fine on Swift. Violent is, of course, the superior set <laughs> in most cases, but uh, Swift can also be more than sufficient here. Uh, just, just get the speed up. And then kind of the same thing. We're going to go speed HP HP in a perfect world. I'm having to go defense because I don't have the HP. And then we want some accuracy in the subs. We don't have quite as much on Bella, but Bella's still landing debuffs fairly regularly, so it's not really that big of a deal. I could probably stand to have a little bit more speed, and we'll get it over time. It's still a, a, a very new account, so this will improve over time. And if anything, this should be uh, promising for you to see that these stats are not insanely high. It, it, it's not hard to obtain this. This, this team at all so swift set if you don't have it violent set if you do focus is a great second set energy is a good second set but again you want to find some accuracy in your subsets here we've got kona mia kona mia is also a champ it's going to give you awakened at some point at two star level kona up very easy to skill up kona mia just by popping unknown scrolls we have kona and a swift set a swift and energy and we're going speed hp defense i'd probably go speed hp hp if i could but uh new account. I don't, have, I don't have all those runes available to me yet. Uh, and when I say speed HP HP, in your in your four and six slots, you always want percentage. So so don't go flat HP here. Make sure you have that percentage, okay? We'll, we'll probably do a video talking about runes uh, more in depth, but when I say speed HP HP or speed HP defense, defense, you're always looking for a percentage except on speed. If I'm not mistaken, speed is the only stat we're not looking for a percentage on in this game. So uh, you'll, you'll never get speed percentage, but everywhere else, uh, well, I should say on, on four and six, it's percentage at the end of whatever stat we say, okay? So Kona, just get Kona fast and tanky. You can get some accuracy if you like. I don't have a ton, but Kona Mia does have a solid stun on the A1. 
which can be handy. I would not sacrifice any speed or HP for it though. Okay, ooh, Monkey King. Monkey King. Fire Monkey King. I used to have a Wind Monkey King on my old account, I'm missing. And then, Shannon. It's gonna give you a despair set for Shannon, okay? Now, my Shannon is not optimal. I have the focus set because I want the accuracy. We, we will have this as an HP piece when we get it, but uh, I wanted to have the accuracy on her because I want her landing her debuffs. It'll give you the despair set though. You'll notice every despair piece here is maxed because the game gives you this as you progress through one of the summoner's way paths, I believe. Uh, maybe the one, maybe the giant's one since it's working on Shannon, but she's fantastic in a despair set. I, I think it's kind of the way to go. You can get away with a with a swift set or something, but I think just using the despair set that the game is going to give you for her, can't beat it. Shannon and despair, and we'll, we'll check the stats here. You see despair is just dominating the numbers here. Swift is a secondary, like I said. So uh, just stick with the despair set. It gives you, it's fine. Go with an energy set if you can get a little uh, accuracy in your subs. Otherwise, a focus set is the way to go. But you definitely want to go speed HP, HP on her, I would say. So that's it. That's my team, and that's how they're built. Now I'm going to go through and, and, and talk about a few other champs that can be useful in this dungeon, okay? Some that I currently have on me, uh, Light, uh, Fran, Fran's going to be a pretty solid support everywhere. She's She's got a cleanse, she's got immunity, she's got a little speed lead, she's a great support, so she can definitely be a viable option for support. If you haven't gotten your hands on a Bella yet, Fran can definitely support you, okay? You do need to tank her up a bit, but Fran is excellent in there, all right? She's got the um, the attack down on the A1, which is gonna be very helpful for the giant when that counter attack comes through. If you have an attack down, you're almost certainly gonna survive it. Really handy. Here, you've got the removes all harmful effects on a single target and recovers HP. And then here, you've got the HP of all allies, increases attack power. Now, she heals based on her attack power. So I think as you get a little bit later in the game, when you have the, the flexibility to do so, you could probably build her with attack stats. You could probably go speed attack attack and get a lot of your, of your tankiness in your sub stats. I feel like that might be kind of difficult to do when you're newer though. I feel like she's gonna be very susceptible to getting taken out re really easily with newer account gear. <clears throat> so you kind of have to play it by ear. If you wanted to try it that way, you certainly could. She would heal in much bigger burst. But if you'd rather keep her alive, then to just throw the energy set on her, give her HP, and, uh, and she'll be fine, all right? And then you do want some accuracy on her if you wanted to land that attack down. So keep that in mind when you're when you're building, all right? Uh, Lulu is, is another very solid support that I think could probably be really good in there. I don't think I've done much with Lulu in here, but I don't see any reason why she couldn't be fine in here, okay? She's, she's a very solid support. I'm blown away at the quality of the two stars in this game. I'd kind of forgotten as, I, as I've ventured off and played so many other games and, and so many games don't really put a lot of quality in their two stars there's a couple of standouts in raid but for the most part games don't really do that and i'm not even sure <laughs> raid did it on purpose if i'm gonna be honest with you um there's a lot of really high quality champs that can go very late into the game in this game that are that are based two stars so uh, lulu's fantastic for, for that dungeon all right Moving along, other champs that I have that could be good. I did an old video, I think, soloing it with Ramagos. You, you need some pretty high quality gear, but you get him on a good vampire set, he can solo it. He's got good self-sustain, and then here he's got a skill where he does as much damage as he's lost HP. So if you shoot his HP way up and use a skill when his HP percentage is low, he's gonna do a ton of damage. He's great for one-shotting people everywhere and he can do some pretty big damage to the giant. Uh, it's not a strat you're gonna be using anytime soon, <laughs> but I don't see any reason he couldn't be a viable member of the team if you were strapped for champs, okay? Uh, Bernard is fantastic, right? We've got we've got the turn meter with the uh, attack speed buff. We've got attack down and defense down on the A2, which is nice. You can get this down to a two turn cooldown, which is pretty handy. And then uh, here he's just a, a standard attack. But he's great. He can be really, really nice. He can be really helpful in there, okay? Uh, Chasun. If you get lucky enough to pull a Chasun early on, she is certainly on her way up. She's a killer support. She's going to make your life 
infinitely easier in there, okay? She's got glancing on the A1, which means it's gonna increase the likelihood that the giant doesn't hit you flush and do, do hardly any damage. Got a great heal here, and then this here is a heal that, that can't really be interfered with by heal block. Not a problem in the giant dungeon, but very, uh, very useful, okay? Fills the H, basically pulls the lower HP bar up to match the higher one with whichever ally you pick and does the same with the turn meter. It's a very strong skill, very, very good. She's, she's gonna make your life a lot easier if you've been lucky enough to pull her early on. I mean, there's a ton. Lucian, you start to get into some speed strats, he can help you wave clear. Kind of the same thing I was saying with Lapis, even if you have him kind of early on, he can help you wave clear. And then if he goes down at the giant, he goes down, have a, a decent setup of other champs that can lay some poisons down and stuff and you'll be fine. Uh, like Cowgirl, she's a multi-hit. I think she's kind of dangerous. I'm not sure Giant's where she shines. But I, it's been a, it's been a while. I don't remember. Let me uh, let's see where she's getting used. It is giant. Okay, she is. Maybe it's more of a speed strat thing with her though. Is that is that right? Someone let me know if that's if that's why she's in my head at all for giants. I feel like it's an old it's a, it's a speed. I was gonna say an old speed strat thing, but apparently that's not the case. Because <laughs> uh, she's still in every team. I think it's a speed. I think she's a speed strat champ. Maybe she is great in there. Let's take a look real quick. Three projectiles with a slow. Remove beneficial effects. Decreases attack bar with each attack and weakens defense. Yeah, that's pretty handy. With each attack. So she's got a lot of turn meter manipulation. That's probably pretty handy in there. She's got a lot of multi hits too, though. So I think she's going to get herself taken out. If you're trying to do a, a run that's going to last a little bit longer, which again can be viable, you don't have to have everyone alive. You just need to really you need to keep Melia alive to, to lay poisons down, and you're fine for a while. Again, we'll talk about speeding up later. One other champ that I wanted to talk about that's really really good. I haven't gotten around to, I haven't got my hands on him yet, but he is Darian, the Light Vagabond. You can get him from a secret dungeon. And he's fantastic because of this. Decreases the damage that other allies receive by 20%. He, he, just by being on the battlefield, just by being alive, he's reducing the incoming damage by 20%. That is gonna make it so much easier to be alive. <laughs> it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna lower your gear requirements substantially. It's gonna be much easier to keep the whole team alive. Uh, he is part of the strategy, even way, way, way back in that old video I was talking about. And he's a big part of why it's possible with five-star champs and very, very low-level gear. It's because of this damage reduction. And then that's it. That's not all he's doing either. Uh, he's got a defense down here. And he's got attack down here. So defense down, attack down, and a very, very handy damage reduction passive. Uh, basically, every turn he takes is a valuable turn. And again, just by being on the battlefield... He's going to make your life so much easier. So if you've managed to get your hands on a Darien, uh, I, would, I would highly recommend that. And then just tank him up. Defense, HP, tank him up. And get some accuracy on him so he can land his debuffs. And you'll be in good shape. Right? Bernard, if I didn't say, obviously a swift set's going to be the way to go on him. Swift focus, swift energy. Get his speed and accuracy and HP up a good bit. Uh, Chasun, violent if you've got it. Swift if you don't. Get her HP way up. Get her speed way up. Kind of a theme you see with the or with the earlier game dungeons it's really about staying alive <laughs> so uh, keep yourself alive and let melia stack poisons the game's going to make you get her anyway if you go through the missions uh, so i think i think really get you a good wave clear lapis can do that get you a good poisoner melia can do that the game gives you both of those very early on fill the other three spots with good support Shannon's amazing. Fran's fantastic. Kona's very good. Bella's incredible. Darian's fantastic. You can do it with two star champs. Not difficult to, to accomplish. And get you a consistent dungeon and then wear this repeat battle out in, in Giants, okay? Get your, get your gear up because you get some good sets here. Despair, Energy, Fatal, Blade, Swift. Swift is a, an, an incredibly valuable set. You know, champs like Bernard. There's a lot of champs that you're going to use Swift on. All of these sets are very good. So just because they drop from the first dungeon doesn't mean they're like 
exclusively early game sets. I mean, you're going to use a lot of these sets all the way through the game. Despair is incredibly strong in certain situations. Swift is necessary, very necessary. Uh, you, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of all those sets. And it's going to help you get into a situation where you can work on Dragon. Because Dragon is substantially harder. Dragon is a much harder dungeon than Giants to get deep in. I'm only in Dragon. Uh, I just cleared eight. So we're working on getting a, a Dragon situation set up now. I'll be doing a video on that soon when we do. Very similar to this one. We'll talk about what my first consistent team is, how they're built, and some other options for it. And then we'll just continue to work our way down the list. A Necro, I think when I jump in, it'll all start coming back to me because Necro was around for a while. I was pretty familiar with that. Still Fortress and Punisher's Crypt, I don't know much about. So we're going to be learning those together. Um, but that's it. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this. Again, I know I got a lot of newer players watching these videos, so I hope that, that this helps you. Uh, one, focus. Know where to focus your attention for now while you're while you're such a newer player. Giants B10 is like your first big thing that you're striving for. And then you are going to want to live in there for a little bit to to um, you know expand your your rune inventory so that you could start getting champs set up for dragon. And then one tip I'll go ahead and give you now in advance so you can start prepping for it uh, for dragon is one of one of the champs in here that's going to be pretty easy to fuse. That's going to be incredibly helpful for you is Vertiheel. He did not used to be a fusion. The fusion hinge used to have. These four, and then a few of a few of these that were necessary for them, and then eventually they added her, and then these two have been added since I stopped playing. I don't remember them being fusions, and then a lot of four stars have been added, and there's some really really good ones in here. I'm I'm kind of surprised to see him in here. He's so good. <laughs> so uh, keep an eye out for these champs. They're all two or three stars. They should not be hard to get. And he is amazing for a dragon team, okay? He's got a very good speed lead, which is gonna make your life a lot easier. And then when he's awakened, he's got a passive. We'll go take a look at it real quick. Um, when he is awakened, where's he at? He has a passive. Your critical hits increase the attack bars of all allies by 20%. This effect does not, this does not have an effect on allies that have similar, similar skills. He hits two times with the A1. Um, so, that's crazy. It's so good. It's gonna be so helpful. So he's probably the first fusion you wanna focus on. He's gonna be easy to do because he's only a four star fusion. The champs to, it's, that uses food form should be fairly obtainable, easy to get to four star maxed, easy to awaken. It's gonna be an easy fusion to do. So this would this would be what I would say start prepping for because the next thing we're gonna do after Giants is work on Dragon. Um, so I'm gonna work on getting him. I'm gonna have him built. He's gonna be the star probably of the next video that we do for Dragon. So if you wanna follow along, I would focus this and get this fusion done and go ahead and get him at least five starred. We'll go ahead and get him at least five starred for now, and uh, and then we'll talk about how we're going to build him, what kind of team we're going to build around him, and how how helpful he's going to be uh, in Dragon. And not only in Dragon, he's got lots of utility in, in many other places. But for now, we're going to be focusing on Dragon utility because the big thing we got to do is get this rune inventory expanded. All right. So again, hopefully it was helpful. Stay tuned. Uh, there may be a couple videos between this one and the Dragon one, but the Dragon one is coming. That's kind of my next big project that we're going to be working on. For, uh, for like the, the, the guide progression type stuff. So um, that's it, I'm getting out of here, I'm done rambling. Appreciate y'all, hope it was helpful. See you later.